Hey there, welcome to today's video. We're going to walk through one of the oldest Lie code problems out there, meeting of two sorted arrays, a true classic that everyone should do at least once and try not to forget. Let's get into it. So the problem description is pretty simple. We're given two sorted arrays, nums1 and nums2, and we're told to return the median of the two sorted arrays in log time. All right, so since we're told in the description that we need to find a log solution, and given that the arrays are sorted, that hint should point you toward a binary search solution. Now, in order to perform a binary search, we need to have well-defined conditions for termination, and we also need to know how and when we search based on our current guess. So let's take a stab at it. Let's say we have arrays like so. Can you safely determine the median in this case? Think about it and pause the video. I'll reveal the answer in three, two, one. Yes, you can. The median here is six. The length of both arrays combined is 9, so if we were to combine both arrays into one sorted array, we'd want index 4 in that sorted array. Since we know that both arrays are sorted, we know that these elements here to the left of 6 are less than or equal to 6. Therefore, we know that the elements labeled as A will be the first four elements when you combine and sort both arrays. Therefore, that means one of the 6s must be index 4. Since the median is the length of both the arrays combined divided by 2, then that means we've found our median. Now let's say we have two arrays like so instead. Can we say anything definitively about the median in this case? Think about it and pause the video. I'll reveal the answer in 3, 2, 1. The answer is no. Why? Well, because 10 is larger than 6, we can no longer safely say that the A's will be the first four elements. It might be the case that the elements look like this, 9, 9, 10, 11, and 1, 1, 6, 7, 8, in which case the median would be 8. But if the elements were instead 2, 2, 10, 11, and 1, 1, 6, 6, 6, then the median would be 6. So when you're looking at unequal elements in the array, it looks like you don't gain any information about the median. But most of the time, when you guess two elements in the two arrays, you're going to end up with two unequal elements. So how do we remedy this? Let's take a look at our earlier example, 2, 2, 10, 11, and 1, 1, 6, 6, 6. And let's recall the fundamentals of binary search. Binary search relies on structured guessing, followed by fast validation of that guess. We just determined that choosing only one element from each array doesn't really help us. So let's see just how many elements we need to make a quick and deterministic validation before deciding whether to keep guessing. So in the first case, if we consider our guess window to be the entirety of both arrays, then obviously we can find the median. Since we, since we know that the total length is 9, as long as we can definitively point out the fifth smallest element, we know we're good. Now, what if I exclude the last element of my second list from my guess window, like so? Can I still tell what's the median? Yes, of course. We can still definitively point to the five smallest elements in the two arrays. Similarly, the 11 and the second 6 can be removed for the same reason. We can still see that the remaining 1s, 2s, and 6 make up the 5 smallest elements. Now, what if we remove something on the left of the 10 and 6, say the first element of both arrays? Do we lose any information? No, we don't. Since a is less than or equal to 2 and b is less than or equal to 1, we can still correctly deduce that a and b and 1 and 2 make up the four smallest elements, so therefore 6 is still the median. Can we remove any more elements? If we remove 6 and 10 from our guess window, then we can still deduce that a, b, 1, and 2 are the four smallest elements. However, we can't tell whether x or y is the next larger element. Therefore, the median in this case is ambiguous. Now, if we remove 6 and 2, then we're back to where we started, where either of these two options are possible. Okay. So this is the minimum set of information we need to determine the median. We can deduce the four smallest elements, those marked in red here, and we can also deduce the next element that's larger than those smallest elements. So in our binary search, we need to identify two pairs of numbers, x1, y1 from the first array, and x2, y2 from the second array, such that x1 is less than or equal to y2, and x2 is less than or equal to y1. Why? Well, by finding two pairs of numbers that satisfy this condition, we ensure that all numbers to the left of the colored numbers are less than or equal to the minimum of the guessed numbers, and all numbers to the right are at least as large as the maximum of the guessed numbers. 
By doing so, we can correctly deduce the indices of the four colored numbers, meaning that we can find the median. Now, we have one more key piece to this problem. Not only do we need to find elements where x1 is less than or equal to y2, and x2 is less than or equal to y1, but we also need to find such a pair where the number of elements to the left of x1 and x2 is equal to the total number of elements plus 1, 4 divided by 2, minus 2. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is a bizarre number, and this is a very long video. Where did I get this from? Well, hang on, because this is the last piece of the puzzle we'll need to solve this problem. So hang tight. The first observation we make is that in a sorted array, element i is at least as large as i elements in the array. The second observation is that when n is even, the plus 1 is a no-op. n plus 1 for 2 is equal to n for 2. And the median is going to be the arithmetic mean of element n for 2, and n for 2 minus 1. The third observation is both a reminder and an extension of that reminder. Recall that we defined our pair as one in which x1 is less than or equal to y2, and x2 is less than or equal to y1. Here's the earlier example as a reminder. One additional fact we can deduce is that x1 is less than or equal to y1, and x2 is less than or equal to y2, because the arrays we're given are already sorted. Therefore, if we were to sort these four colored numbers, we'd have min of x1, x2 first, then max x1, x2, then min of y1 and y2, and then finally max of y1 and y2. And now putting it all together, due to observations 1 and 3, we know that min of x1 and x2 has index n42 minus 2. We know that the next element after that, max of x1, x2, is going to have index n42 minus 1. And we know the element after that is going to have index n42, and that that next element is going to be min of y1, y2. Therefore, due to observation number two, the median is going to be the mean of max of x1, x2, and min of y1, y2. In the case where total elements is odd, we start with the fact that n plus 1 for 2 is equal to n for 2 plus 1. So therefore, our entire expression for the number of elements to the left of x1 and x2 is going to be n for 2 minus 1. Additionally, for odd length sorted arrays, the median will be at index n for 2. And so, if there are n for 2 minus 1 elements to the left of x1, x2, the min of x1, x2 is going to have an index n for 2 minus 1, and the max of x1 and x2 is going to have index n for 2. So therefore, the median in the odd case will be max of x1, x2, which we got from observation number 2. So to briefly recap, by fixing the number of elements to the left of x1 and x2, we have deterministic results for the medium. In the odd case, the result will always be the average of the maximum x and the minimum y. And in the even case, the result will always be the maximum x. So given that elements to the left of x1, x2 is equal to n plus 1 for 2 minus 2, that means for every guessed pair in our smaller array where y1 is at index a, y2 must be at index n plus 1 for 2 minus a. Why? Well, if y1 is at index a, then x1 must be at a minus 1, and x2 must be at b minus 1. There are a minus 1 elements smaller than x1 in array 1, and b minus 1 elements smaller than x2 in array 2. Our goal is to have n plus 1 for 2 minus 2 elements to the left of both x1 and x2. Since the index of an element in a sorted array is the same as the number of elements that are smaller than that element, we can say that the sum of the indices of x1 and x2 should be equal to the total number of elements we expect to be to the left of x1 and x2. So we get the expression a minus 1 plus b minus 1 is equal to n plus 1 for 2 minus 2. And now if we solve for b, we get b equals n plus 1 for 2 minus a. So now we have all our missing pieces. We'll guess an index a in the shorter array, and we'll define b as the result of n plus 1 for 2 minus a. If x1 is less than or equal to y2 and x2 is less than or equal to y1, then all our conditions have been met and we terminate. Otherwise, if x1 is greater than y2, we binary search to the left of a and set b according to the expression we have above. Otherwise, we search to the right of a. So that's our solution sketch. Let's jump into the code. So the first thing we're going to do is first ensure that the smaller list is our nums1. This is just to ensure that our guess in the second array doesn't go out of bounds. Next, 
We define some util variables, where left and right just define the boundaries of our binary search window, and capital N is the total length of both lists. Then we start our binary search. While the left boundary is less than or equal to the right boundary, we guess A as the midpoint of left and right, and we define B as we did earlier in the slides, n plus 1 for 2 minus A. Now recall that x1 is going to be at index A minus 1. So if A minus 1 goes out of bounds, we set x1 to be negative infinity. Otherwise, we'll set it to index a minus 1 of nums1. Similarly, if y1 is going to be out of bounds of nums1, we set it to positive infinity. And then we do the same for x2 and y2, but using nums2. Okay, so now that we have our two pairs x1, y1 and x2, y2, we can just implement all the ideas we talked about earlier. If x1 is less than or equal to y2, and x2 is less than or equal to y1, we then return the result according to the length of the array. Otherwise, if our guest x1 is larger than y2, that means a is too large, and we need to search to the left of a, so we set the right boundary of our binary search to be a minus 1. Otherwise, that means a is too small, so we search to the right of a by setting the left boundary of the binary search to a plus 1. All right. So that's how you do this classic lead code problem. And the next time this shows up in an interview, you can walk them through this very detailed explanation. Thanks for watching. And if you found this helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.